الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد لا إله إلا الله 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 أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يبدل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من ناس واحدة وخلق من هذا الجهة وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتيء الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الهديد كتاب الله وقير وقير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور مهتفاتها وكل مهتفات بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله we thank and we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Send peace and blessings upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillah. After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sending peace and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want to call you to one of the ayat that was mentioned just a few seconds ago. In Surah Al-Ali Imran, Surah number three, the family of Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha ladhina amanu, O you who believe, ittaqu Allah, have fear of Allah, have reverence of Allah, have God consciousness, and do not die except as Muslims. Fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslims. None of us know when we are going to die. The only way to ensure that we die as Muslims is that we have to live as Muslims. The minute that any of us slip, when I say slip, I don't mean make a mistake or do a sin, because all of us slip, make mistakes, and commit sins. I'm talking about slip out of Islam by doing or saying or thinking or feeling in such a way that it removes us from Islam, know that that could be that second that Allah takes our soul. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. A little while ago, I was being interviewed along with some other imam. Some of you saw that. Some of you saw it on YouTube, barbershop. Uh, talk. And one of the questions that was asked was, do imams sneak dish people in the khutbah, in the Jummah khutbah? Do imams be taking shots at people individually, like in the Jummah khutbah? My response was, 
that I deal with issues. Now obviously, an issue, somebody in the community may be involved or may be related to that issue, but as far as sneak dissing or throwing shade or talking trash about someone individually in the clipboard, no. And if I do this someone, it's not a sneak this, it's an open this. Everyone's gonna know who I'm talking about. And nine times out of 10, it won't be a uh, quote unquote a proper Muslim. And it won't necessarily be to diss. It'll be to educate or to show how foolish having such a belief is. I also said that Sometimes I give a Juma khutbah or I write or speak on an issue and a person may come to me or I may know about a situation that may have sparked it, but it will be something that, hey, this person may have sparked it, but there's a whole lot of other people dealing with this same issue. And so that particular person or that person's situation may have sparked, say, okay, you know what, this is Juma, I'm gonna talk about that. Or I need to write about that. Or what happened? Or I need to do a class on that. This is one of those Juma cookbooks where something happened, and I said, SubhanAllah, I need to talk about this. Why, because that one person has an issue? No, because it took that individual, that one situation, to make me realize, wait a minute, it's not only that person that thinks, there's a whole lot of people that think like that. Like our brother Hassan Ali says, if there's one, nine times out of ten, there's a whole lot more. So alhamdulillah, we're going to be talking about self-destructive mental and spiritual states. Self-destructive mental and spiritual states. One of the things I think we need to focus on when we are educating people about Islam, whether they be people who are interested in becoming Muslims or they're new Muslims, one of the things I think we need to focus a little bit or a lot more on is the tenets of our belief. And I talk about this a lot, especially our belief about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But I'm not talking about that today. You know about the hadith of Jibril, Jibril, the angel Jibril, where the Sahaba narrated, particularly the two more, more famous narrations by Umar and Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala and Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, how angel Jibril and at the time, they didn't know he was Angel Jabril. But Angel Jabril came, and he said he appeared almost out of nowhere. And he had exceedingly white clothes, and his hair was extremely black, yet no signs of journey appeared on him, and none of us knew him. And then he said he sat down in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so close that his knees touched his knees and he placed his hands in his knees. And he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni an islam O Muhammad, inform me or tell me what Islam is. And he said, Islam is that you bear witness that there is no God but Allah. Muhammad is his messenger. That you establish the Salat. That you pay the Zakat. That you fast the month of Ramadan, which is coming very soon. Don't sleep. Ramadan starts in May this year. <coughs> and that you make Hajj, you make pilgrimage to the house if you have the ability to do so. Popularly known as the five pillars of Islam. Every Muslim should know these five things in their order. If someone asks you what are the five pillars of Islam and you're stuttering, or you're hesitating, or you're saying them out of order, 
that's a sign that either maybe you just took shahada or maybe you're a little bit more of a nominal Muslim. If this is you, I'm not saying this to throw shade. I'm saying this to let you know that you have to brush up. And then the man who turned out to be Angel Jibril, but at, at this point in the narration, we don't know this yet. He said, Sadaqata, you have spoken the truth. And the narrator, Umar ibn al-Khattab says, we were amazed that he would ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a question, then get the answer, and then verify that he spoke the truth. <coughs> and then he said, for akhbini an al-iman, inform me or tell me what is faith or belief. Qala and took me up in Lahi, Wamala, Ikatihi, or good to be he, or Rusuli, or Yom and Ahim. What took me up with Kadri, Kairi, you wish on me. He said, Belief is that you believe in Allah, His angels, His messengers, His books, <coughs> the day of judgment. And that you believe in the Qadr, the divine decree. It's good and it's evil. And then he said the same thing, said, Doctor, you've spoken the truth. Then he said, What is it said? What is excellence or spiritual excellence? It said is a synonym for the soul. In case you didn't know. It means the same thing. You can use interchange them words. You can you can say it said or the soul or tasir to nafs. You can say a lot of things. He said it said is that you worship Allah as though you see him. If you can't see him, know that he sees you. <coughs> he said, what is the hour? He says, the questioner doesn't know any more about it than the one being questioned. He said, well, what are some of its signs? <coughs> he said that the slave woman will give birth to her mistress when some narrations are master that you will see broke, barefooted, desert Bedouins competing with each other and building tall, lofty buildings. And then the man just left. And then it was quiet for a second. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Umar, Ya Umar, do you know who the questioner was? And Umar said, Allah wa Rasuluhu A'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. And he said, that was Jibreel. Atakum yu'allimukum deenukum. That was Jibreel. He came to teach you your deen. I narrated this hadith just to call your attention to one thing. We said that we need to educate people a little bit more on our belief system. I want to call your attention to one thing. When he said, what is Iman? What is faith? What is belief? He said, belief or faith is that you believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers and the last day. And then he said, what took me not because of me. In other words, he said, belief is one, two, three, four, five. He lists five things. And then he said, what took me now? And then he repeated the verb again, and that you believe al qadr Kairihi wa Sharihi. The divine decree. It's good and it's bad. SubhanAllah. 
We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sending the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to us in the Arabic language, speaking the Arabic language. Because there's an emphasis there. The statement begins what, with the word watubina, and that you believe. Why repeat it? SubhanAllah. When you mention this last thing, Allah's divine decree. And a lot of us don't get that. That you believe in Allah's decree, it's good and it's bad. Think about that. When we take shahada, when we say we're Muslims, we are bearing witness that we believe in and accept Allah's divine decree. What Allah has written for us before we even came into existence. It's good and it's bad. See, a lot of us have foreign or alien beliefs. A lot of us are almost, we have the prosperity understanding. You know, prosperity preaching. If, every, if I'm up and everything is good, that means God is pleased with me. If I'm down and, I have, and, I'm, living, and, I'm, and I'm having a hard time, something's wrong, things are not falling into place, that means God is displeased with me. That's not the Islamic belief. But a lot of us have that belief. If something bad is happening to me, why me? Why is this going on with me? Why is this happening to me? It could be many reasons why it's happening to you. And if your spiritual eye is not opening, opened, you're going to miss the blessings in that bad thing happening to you. That bad thing happening to you could be a way that Allah uses to wipe off some of your sins. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that any type of pain or affliction that a believer goes through, some of his sins get wiped away, even if he gets pricked by a thorn. When something afflicts you, your mind should automatically go in, in your mind a list of all the dirt you did. Not just the dirt that people know about, the dirt that only you and Allah know about. And not only the dirt that you've physically done with your hands, the dirt that you've done with your heart. You loving some of the things that Allah made haram for you. But maybe you didn't do it yet. You didn't get involved with the haram, but your heart still loves it. That's a sin of the heart. That's only between you and Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that none of you believes until his hawa, his desires are, in cons are consistent with what, with what I have brought. In other words, we shouldn't be loving those things that are haram. It's good that we're not doing them. That's on an outward. That's outwardly. That's good. But we also should not love those things that Allah made haram. That's, as we said, on a whole nother level. Alhamdulillah. 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 Wa afdulu salat wa tamu taslim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa radiyallahu ta'ala ala sadi tatabiyin. Wa ulama al-amaleen. Wa a'imatu al-arabatu mujtahideen. Wa mukali bihim ila yawmi al-deen amma ba'ad. And Abi Hurairata radiyallahu anhu qal qal al-nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqulu allahu ta'ala anna indi dhani abdi bi. Wa rahu bukhari wa kathalika muslim wa thulmi wa ibn majah. Walhamdulillah. 
has been narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira, who narrates from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who said that Allah said, "This is what's called the Hadith al Qudsi, what they call a divine or a holy Hadith. In other words, these this is Allah's revelation, direct Allah's revelation." Put into the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's not in the Quran. Abu Huraira said that Allah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah says, and in the Dhani Abdi bi, I am in the opinion of my servant, my slave. I am in the opinion of my servant or my slave. What does that mean? That means the way you think about Allah, that's how Allah is going to manifest himself to you. What do you mean? Some people think that God is a mean God. He's a cruel God. How would be that? They said, look, all these people getting killed. My, my loved one got shot. God is evil. We seek refuge with Allah from thinking like that. But because you have that opinion to Allah, about Allah, that's how Allah is going to treat you. You see, we have to be careful about the type of energy we have within ourselves and the type of energy we put out. You hear people say, be careful about your vibrations. Be careful about the type of energy you put out. I mean, I can give you many, many, many examples. How many people, rappers, entertain, entertainers, rapped about their own death and rapped about, you know, uh, how this life is? He said, and this believer said, well, he must have been a prophet. He knew he was going to die. No, you put that type of energy out there. You put it out there. And you kept nurturing it and nurturing it and nurturing it until it happened. You didn't realize that in Allah ala kulli shaykh qadir, Allah has power over all things. Allah's divine decree. I am in the opinion of my slave, of my servant. Some people believe that Allah is oppressive. 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 Think about that. Allah favors certain of his creation over others. Allah is mean. Allah is unjust. SubhanAllah, do you know what you're saying? A lot of people have these beliefs. And some people are actually saying, my question that I always have, you really think that about Allah? Why are you worshiping him? If you think God is so foul, why, why would you worship a God like that? And Abi Dharm Gifari radiallahu anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of Fima Yariye Yarwihi and Rabbi Azza wa Jalla Annuhu Qala Ya Abdi Inni Haramtu Dhulma Ala Nafsi Wa Ja'altuhu Baynakum Muharraman Fala Tadhalamu Rahu Muslim Abu Dhar al-Ghifari May Allah be pleased with him Narrates from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Who said That he Narrates from Allah The Mighty and Majestic Who said O oh my servants, inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi. I have made oppress, oppression haram upon myself. This is another hadith of Qudsi. Allah is saying on the tongue of the Prophet wasallam that he has prohibited oppression for himself. What's oppression? Taking away one person's rights. Or put it another way, injustice. Putting a square, forcing a square peg into a round hole, putting things in, in, in other than their proper places. This is oppression. Oppression. Allah has prohibited this for Himself. 
muharraman. And Allah has made it prohibited among you. Oppression is never good. So don't be oppressive. Don't oppress one another. And this hadith has been narrated by Muslim in his sahih. See, a lot of people don't want to place the blame where, where it naturally goes. A lot of people are caught on a zahir. They are caught on the, on the outer. And they ignore the inner, the bottom. They ignore. They're only concerned with this life. They don't actually believe in the next life, even though they say they, they, they do. A lot of people don't want to take responsibility. You know how some, some subhanAllah, I've seen this and it amazes me every time. A sister will come to me. Brother, I need, ma'am, I need to get married. Brothers don't want to marry me. Brothers treat me so bad, they use me. I was married to a brother before and he always told me how ugly I was. I'm like, subhanAllah, you married some foul dudes. You married to a person, he tell you, oh, ugly. Like, subhanAllah. And then sometimes I observe them. I say, subhanAllah, this is your own energy coming back to you. I want to make myself so attractive. You go on their Facebook page or their, or their Instagram or Twitter page, every other post is a picture about food. Your religion is food. You eat all the time. And you wonder why you're so big. No, these brothers aren't just. They don't know what real inner beauty is. You curse more than the brothers. You're content with being ignorant. You anti-man. You're a man basher. What is it attractive about you outwardly or inwardly? You don't know anything about Islam, but you're Muslim. You hate men, but you want men to marry you. But you blame the men for the trouble in your life. You blame the men for your choices. If you are honest about these so-called bad men in your life, and you list all of, and you listed all of the complaints you had about your ex-husbands, you've seen the sins, you've seen the problems they had before you married them, but you chose to marry them anyway, and then after the divorce, you blame them, but you don't blame your decision-making process. <clears throat> and this is a problem in our society. We want to blame everyone else except ourselves. Oh, the sister was ratchet. The sister was too hood. The sister wasn't really about the dean. You knew it before you married her. But you chose to marry her anyway. And then you want to complain about what you already saw before the marriage. The problem ain't the sister. The problem is you and your decision-making process. You got married because of your lower head and not with your upper head. That's your problem. Then you get into marriage, and now you all want to think about the upper head now that the lower head is not happy anymore. You marry based upon your nafs, your desires. Many of us complain about the brotherhood. The brotherhood is not there. What have you contributed to the brotherhood? When the brothers needed you, where were you? Nowhere. Now you need the brothers. Ah, oh, that's why I don't come around. The brothers ain't around. Well, you ain't never around. Everybody just like you. You get it, you get out of a thing what you put into it. This is the reality. We put out negative energy. We have negative thoughts. And Allah manifests these things in our lives. And who do we blame? Everybody else. And some of us are so at such a low level, we blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have to wonder, is such a person still a Muslim? Allahu wa rasuluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. May Allah protect us from falling into these destructive 
mental and spiritual states. Amen. May Allah purify our hearts and purify our actions. Amen. May Allah make us closer to him. Amen. May Allah make us more like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and those around him.